dear students whenever we deal with a specific subject it is somehow important i might say to know about the major contributors to the study of that particular subject and in this reference today i would like to discuss with you some renowned contributors to the study of animal behavior conrad zecherus lorenz he was an austrian zoologist ethnologist and ornithologist who discovered the phenomena of early childhood learning called imprinting young geese form an image of parent just after hatching this was what he observed if the hatchlings first encounter a human they will imprint on him and follow him around as if he were their mother imprinting is irreversible learning limited to a sensitive period which is very important in an animal's life so at a very young early age that is at the childhood this behavior is shown this is a learned behavior which is termed as an imprinting and uh, this learning is irreversible one learns to identify the parent if it see it's the actual parent definitely the imprinting would be of the actual parent but if instead it is of some other uh, individual may it be a human being then the if it because the hatchlings first encounter a human being then they learn that this human being is their mother and that is what is uh, imprinting and it is limited to a sensitive period a very short period when this learning process takes place lorenz used the gray lag goose and jut dows to demonstrate imprinting he took over the maternal role for a group of goslings when they grew up they followed lorenz taking him as con specific he has written many books such as king solomon's reign on aggression man needs dog these were very popular conrad lorenz has been called the father of ethology by nicotine version to honor him a conrad lorenz institute for evolution and cognition research is established in austria conrad lorenz institute of ethology this is in vienna and lorenz institute for behavioral physiology is in bulldern germany so this is all about this author which one should know before we proceed for the detailed study of ethology the next contributor and a major contributor is nicolas nico tinbergen he was a dutch ethologist and ornithologist who shared the 1973 nobel prize in physiology or medicine with carl von frisch and conrad lorenz tinbergen approached animal behavior studies experimentally in the field and proposed tinbergen's four whys he proposed the phenomena of sign and specific stimulus required to release genetically determined behaviors his experiments with three spined sticklebacks is considered classic example to support it i have discussed it in my earlier discussions his observations on how animals learn is exemplary tin virgin wrote about the behavior of herring gulls turns several raptors and owls about migration and bird territories and about shells and birds on the beaches all in many natural history magazines he is the one who proposed the concept that to release a fixed action pattern a sign stimulus is needed as mentioned earlier he also conducted a classical experiment with digger wasps to prove that even small creatures learn the ethnologist gesellschaft association awards the nico tinbergen 
prize which is uh, in his name. Karl Ritter von Frisch. He was an Austrian nephrologist. He studied at the University of Munich and received his doctorate in zoology in 1910. He is noted for his studies of insect behavior and sensory physiology. He pioneered studies in bee communication and foraging. He published remarkable research work on bees. He demonstrated that honeybees can see colors like white, yellow, blue and violet. They can see ultraviolet rays. Honeybees use a dance language called waggle and circle dance to communicate with each other. In his honor, the prestigious Karl Ritter von Frisch Medal of the German Zoological Society is given. Boris Frederick Skinner. He was an American behaviorist, author, inventor, and poet. He was professor of psychology at Harvard University from 1958 until his retirement in 1974. Experimental studies of behavior in the laboratory using manipulation have been conducted by Skinner. He explained that the behavior could be shaped or controlled by controlling the rewards and punishment as reinforcements as it encourages and discourages behavioral response he called behaviorism or the law of effect. We shall be studying in details the experiments which have been performed by Skinner. Right now I am just trying to tell you all about the authors, about the workers, about the ethologists who are contributors to this subject of animal behavior. Skinner devised a box to perform his experiments and which has been named after his name as Skinner box. In this, a rat was closed in the box, was kept hungry and it was observed that the rat explored the surroundings and by chance pressed the liver and suddenly food came in the dispenser. After few trials, a rat learned how to get food. The box also had speaker and light. So this is an experiment which it performed. With this Skinner box, we shall be dealing with behavior in the future uh, topic when we discuss the learning behavior. Harry Frederick Harlow. He was an American psychologist who provided a new understanding of human behavior and development through studies of social behavior of monkeys. His research contributions in the areas of learning, motivation, and affection have major relevance for general and child psychology. He is best known for his studies on maternal separation and social isolation experiments on rhesus monkeys, which demonstrated the importance of caregiving and companionship in social and cognitive development. Richard Dawkins. He was a British ethologist and an evolutionary biologist. Dawkins came to prominence with his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene, which popularized the gene-centered view of evolution and introduced the term mean, the behavioral equivalent of a gene. In 1982, he introduced into evolutionary biology the influential concept that the phenotypic effects of a gene are not necessarily limited to an organism's body but can stretch far into the environment including the bodies of other organisms. This concept is presented in his book The Extended Phenotype. He has written many books The Selfish Gene, The Extended Phenotype, The Blind Watchmaker, River Out of Eden, Climbing Mount Improbable, Unweaving the Rainbow, A Devil's Chaplain, The Ancestor's Tale, The God Delusion, The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution, and The Magic Reality, uh, published very lately in 2011. So these are very important contributors to the study of animal behavior. Next is E. O. Wilson. He studied from Harvard University, USA, known for coining the term sociobiology. He is the winner of Pulitzer Prize, Crawford Prize, Pulitzer Prize in 1991 again, Kistler Prize and Nuremberg Prize 
who is an entomologist, naturalist, and an environmentalist. American biologist, researcher, specifically dealing with sociobiology and biodiversity. He was a theorist, giving various theories, a naturalist, conservationist, and author. His biological speciality is myrmecology, the study of ants. Wilson is a two-time winner, as already told, uh, of the Pulitzer Prize for general nonfiction. He is known for his scientific career and also known as the father of sociobiology. Desmond Morris. He is a world-renowned anthropologist, zoologist, author, and painter. He was awarded a DPhil from Oxford University for his thesis on reproductive behavior of the 10 spine stickleback, supervised by Nobel, Laure Nobel laureate Nicotine Bajan. He was employed by the Zoological Society of London as curator of mammals at the London Zoo. He has published more than 80 books and some popular ones are Apes and Monkeys, The Mammals, A Guide to the Living Species, Men and Apes, Primate Ethology, the Naked Ape, the Human Zoo, etc. So, uh, these are only a few, but yes, one should know in, uh, about, before we start with the major subject, uh, one should be briefed about uh, the major contributors uh, in the field or in the subject. Thank you.